Good evening, everybody in the XRP community. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I wanted to do a quick video on Alipay. I wanted to do a quick video for Flutterwave. I've been meaning to do a Flutterwave video for a while. Ripple, the Interledger Protocol, Everest, and NTT Data. And this all kind of ties in together here. So bear with me for a few minutes and uh, hopefully you can follow. I will try to present this as clearly as possible. Thank you for subscribing um, to everybody that has subscribed. I'm not going to ask you to hit the like or subscribe button if you want to. Great. But I appreciate it. Um, this is not financial advice and I am not your financial advisor. First, we have this article here. This is from last year. Alipay partners with Flutterwave to link its 1 billion users to merchants in Africa. This is the China to Africa rail that everybody's been talking about. Let's read a little bit of the article here, and I want you to pay attention to the Rave platform from Flutterwave. Alipay, an Alibaba-owned mobile payments processor, has partnered with Flutterwave, a pan-African payments firm located in San Francisco, sounds familiar, and Lagos, Nigeria, in a move that will see Alipay link its 1 billion users to Flutterwave merchants in Africa. China wants the whole of Africa, and payments matter a lot. The Chinese behemoth has signed up Nigeria's Flutterwave, and a deal that will see Chinese tourists and merchants pay and receive payments with ease. Alipay has been active, activated to all merchants using Flutterwave's Rave account. Therefore, Alipay's 1 billion users globally can trade with Flutterwave accepting businesses in Africa and in the United States. If you are not familiar with how big Alipay is, 1 billion users, I don't think we really need to get too much into Alipay. I posted this probably about six to eight months ago. Actually, Jungle Wink, I believe, was the first one that I saw that posted this. I dug a little bit deeper into this and went back on tonight. I do have some screen grabs that I've saved, but they've deleted quite a bit from this um, article that they posted on Flutterwave's uh, website. This is from Flutterwave, fitting Ripple blockchain into Flutterwave's core infrastructure for Africa payments. Flutterwave Ripple. At Flutterwave, our goal is to pro provide the infrastructure for a unified payment solution that connects Africa to the world. Over the last two years, we have been focused on helping banks and businesses provide seamless and secure payments, payment experiences while we continue to look for more opportunities to connect their business to the global world. We have also identified partnerships as a major factor, factor to achieve our mission, and that is why we recently integrated into the Ripple blockchain network. Ripple is a global leader in enter enterprise blockchain with a growing network over 100 customers now. We know it's much more than that now. Around the world with XCurrent, XVIA, and XRapid now have all been combined into ODL, on-demand liquidity, in their product suite. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit because I'm going to link all this again, uh, as I always do here. But it talks about XCurrent. There's a big blank spot here. If anybody has this slide right here, I would love to see it again. What I want to get into, though, is Ripple's X current art architecture. Down below, Flutterwave integration. Flutterwave is the only technology rail in Africa on the Ripple network. I doubt that's the case now. For payment processing across Africa, we enable banks and payment providers on the Ripple network to receive payment from their customers anywhere in the world seamlessly via the blockchain technology. This slide is also deleted here. So this is underneath. To achieve this integration, we set up the following configurations on RippleNet for Flutterwave. If you go down below, creation of Flutterwave's Interledger protocol. So Flutterwave has their own version of, a, of the ILP, or it's probably just an adapted version over that is, that is basically RippleNet. All transacting currency ledgers were created, each ledger supporting only one type of currency. How it works. Deleted. I have a screen grab here. This is what was underneath that right there. We can see, let me try to zoom in a little bit for you guys. This is underneath that ILP for Flutterwave. XVIA slash X current client. You can see USD slash GBP slash Euro payment. Transfer, transferring over into the Flutterwave sponsor bank. Then you see Flutterwave Ripple settlement account. Flutterwave ILP ledger. Flow of funds. Flutterwave X current. So it legitimately is like integrated into the core infrastructure. 
They're not calling it X current. They're not saying Ripple X current. They are saying Flutter Wave X current, which goes directly into what did we talk about in the Alipay document? All Alipay users will have access to the Rave platform. Flutter Wave X current goes directly into the Rave platform, which transfers over into Flutter Wave settlement banks in Africa, recipient bank accounts, or mobile money wallets. Let me zoom out a little bit here for you guys. <clears throat> this is kind of a scheme right here. Onboarding a transaction party on Ripple involves the following steps. Creating a database scheme for the new connector. Creating a new security certificate for the new connector. Creating a connector account. Setting up a transacting party on Rave so they can track their payouts. What do we say Alipay was just on? Alipay has been activated to all merchants using Flutterwave's Rave account. I'm going to skip through for a little bit here. Many people may not have heard of Flutterwave. However, um, as of 2019, they processed more than $2.5 billion in payments. We all know that a lot of these countries that do not have access to bank accounts and financial services are growing and they're going to explode in this industry once this industry actually takes off. We have seen nothing as far as an actual adoption curve yet from some of these countries that are actually leaders even in this industry. The regulation that we see in certain countries is much, much, much more, much, uh, much more progressive than we see even in the United States. I know Japan is huge. China, we're just seeing come on this year. So this China... Alipay, the flutter wave, all this stuff. They're trying to build all these rails up. I'm going to keep moving on because it collects it, connects even more into uh, Interledger here. I actually found something pretty interesting just tonight. Um, another thing that was interesting today, tourists to China can finally use the country's massively popular mobile payment systems. This is Visa. This is WeChat Pay through Tencent. This is Alipay. This is Visa and MasterCard being allowed to be utilized. Digital payments are taking over everything. Alipay launches international e-wallet. This is in November 2019, giving foreigners access to mobile plat payment platforms and for as a first for China. Now I want to get into a little bit of Mojo Loop or Mojo Loop because I, <clears throat> as many of you may know, uh, Ripple and the Gates Foundation, Mojo Loop. Um, I found this interesting. Interestingly enough, looking for Flutterwave and Mojo Loop here. This is Interledger Map version 1.0 from GitHub, and I know a lot of time on GitHub when you're looking through code, a lot of stuff can be quite confusing. I am not into you know coding as far as crypto is concerned. I don't know a lot about it, and I've misinterpreted stuff in the past before. However, we can see here. Um, I'll put 18Q1 interface on none slash stripe slash flutter white flutter wave on 1810 XRP on 1811. Now, if you click on here and I'm not going to get too into this, but I do want to get into one thing. I'm going to back out in a second here. You can see XRP in here. ILP over XRP ripple XRP network blockchain plug plugins JVM Java stack hyperledger quilt. Now we have this ever connector here. This is what you, what was interesting to me. HTTPS.Erizon.GitHub.io, right? Now, who is this? This is uh, what you type in. This is Horizon from GitHub.io, right? This is some dude from Spain that works for Everest. He's a software architect at Everest Interlab. What is Everest? Everest is NTT data subsidiary, correct? If you have not seen the NTT data slide, which actually I always thought somebody in the XRP community created that. I know Love for Crypto called me out on that probably about four, three, two or three months ago. I just thought it was too ridiculous to be real from an actual company. I mean, it, it and I'm going to show that to you to close this video out here. So Everest at InnoLab, the same dude that mentions Flutterwave here, uh, mentions XRP, mentions the ILP. Let's get into W3 paint, uh, W3C, which is, um, you know, all the Interledger progress. It obviously talks about Java implementation contributed to by Everest. This is Interledger protocol here. Future of web payments, W3C. It's an older document here. This is kind of what... <laughs> so you have a dude who is doing coding or software implementations for Flutterwave, ILP, 
Ripple, XRP, and obviously works um, works at Everest or worked for Everest to implement something a year or two ago. Um, and if you have not seen these documents, I'm sure by this time everybody's everybody's had to have seen this. Cross-border real-time growth settlement. This is the legacy system here, 1980 to 2017. Bank's adoption of real-time settlement 2017. Everything flowing through Ripple, right? Um, Target 2, SEPA, ACH, Fedwire, uh, CHAPS, um, is that Bank of Japan? Everything flows through Ripple, right? And this is an Everest document. And then cross-border real-time growth settlement, 2020 to 2025. And what changes? Everything's running through ILP and the XRP ledger. So I really thought that the Flutterwave information was interesting. It paints a good picture. You see that Alipay partnered with Flutterwave here to link 1 billion users. There's your China to Africa rail. They've been building rails for God knows how long now. Um, and all these integrations, I, I got a comment on YouTube today. Um, I forget what I posted, but it was from 2016 or 2017. Uh, and I can't remember exactly what institution it was. And it was it was really big. Hold on. Let me try to think about it. Um, India. It was, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was definitely India. It was like National Payments Corporation of India. And Ripple had been doing trials with them in 2017. And, you know, not <clears throat> trying to be like mean or anything, responding back to the gentleman that responded to me. I just tried to point um, point out that a lot of the times what you've seen partnerships in 2015, 2016 for proof, proof of concepts have probably went past the 2015, 2016 date. You just don't hear a lot about it because they're probably stress testing. They're probably doing um, other integrations surrounding that. It All of this goes again to paint the picture of how long Ripple has been building this system, how long all these large institutions have been building this system and kind of what the end game has, uh, is here. I mean, things don't happen overnight at all. But all the integration that's been going on with Ripple, it's absolutely insane. And if you're willing to dig a little bit deeper to kind of see what these relationships are, and you start to understand why they're taking a little bit longer than we thought it was going to, because they need to make sure it's perfect, because they're building a new financial system. They're resetting the old system, and they're changing it and they're switching over to the new system. It might be a filtered phase in, but you know, you see it in ISO, you see it in everything. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it wasn't too long for you and feel free to comment. Thank you guys.